YouTube, it's Ryan Phillips. Look what we've got here, the J3 Cub, 1.4 meters from FMS. Absolutely gorgeous, this is a V4. This will actually be our like second, third flights. If you wanna see how we got it flying good, stay tuned. We'll show the entire Unbox Build Radio setup in a separate video, but we're gonna show you how we got it flying really good. So stay tuned. We normally don't say watch the whole thing, but we're gonna say watch the whole thing. If you plan to get this plane, watch the whole thing. There'll be some laughs in there for you too. And without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to go. Throttle cuts off. Oh man, that's so gorgeous. Now look how clean that is going down the runway. Absolutely beautiful. And as you can see, when I give it ailerons, that's at 3.4 volts we're beeping. I wonder if that battery didn't get charged properly. But look how clean it is, guys. Rudder input there, just rudder. A little bit of elevator to keep the angle. And look at this, guys. Now we're in a roll. Look how clean it rolls. It keeps that tail lined up. That's all the stuff you need to make this plane absolutely phenomenal in the air. And if you don't do it, you're gonna hate it. It's gonna fly terrible. It's gonna have coupling on both the ailerons to the, the yaw axis and from the yaw axis to the ailerons. And it's gonna feel almost out of control. So I'm telling you guys, stay tuned. And also don't put a 2200 in here, put a 1300 3S and you will absolutely love the way that this plane performs because it flies amazing on 1300 3S and on 2200, 3S, you're gonna have a hard time getting the battery in the cavity, okay? I'm not exaggerating. I darn near had to break my battery to get it out. Mm -hmm. And look how clean it is now. Just That's absolutely great. wonderful. I can do knife edges. I can do crispy maneuvering. And all you have to do is stay tuned. We'll literally show it right at the beginning of the flights where we had problems, correct? Yeah, this will probably be first. So if you stay tuned, you can see oh, beautiful how we got cloud. here. Yeah. And guys, this is so Amazing. much better. And it's not yes. dead calm. We thought maybe we had kind of outlived the wind, but you can see that wind sock's moving around. It's not dead calm. We do have a reflex in here, so there's a stabilizer in here. I'll shut it off. Now we're no stabilizer. And you'll notice this jumps around a little bit more, but the thing is, the thing is flying fantastic still. 1400 millimeters, light winds, beautiful clouds. And look at that pass, no stabilization at all. It is in the offsetting right now. I'm gonna show you some auto leveling right there. You see how it snapped to level? That's what auto leveling looks like with a reflex. Yes, there is still some coupling with this because of the way the mixes are set up, but it's still very manageable. And then as soon as you let off the sticks, the thing just slowly comes to a level and just flies along. No problem, right? That's not what happens in a real plane, guys. Okay, so if you give rudder, Look how nice and flat it is. Even with the auto leveling and our coupling repairs, look how beautiful that is. A little bit of roll at the end just to make the angle. And there you go. And that's an auto leveling, folks. They normally don't fly that good in auto leveling, in my opinion. Okay, so now auto, auto, auto leveling is off. I'm into stabilized mode now. I wanna see if we can do some upside down flight because it is very wonkadelic upside down, I think. Oh yeah, there's upside down flight, guys. Little teeny bit of elevator just a little bit, like probably five, 10%, just to keep her going straight. And then I'll roll out of that. It flies like a big three channel. If you don't do these mixes, guys, you won't like the way it feels, unless of course you wanna fly a three channel. Camera crew, switch sides. Thank you. Good job, toward the bolt. That's where we're going. And by the way, my elevator feels totally glorious now. No problems at all. And we were wonk 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 mm -hmm. at the beginning look at this guys touch and go and all oh one wheeling it yes god i love it that was one thing i couldn't get to work yesterday and i just assumed look how beautiful this plane is it's going to be a great flying plane not always true guys don't be deceived this is a version four <laughs> yeah. why did it take four and then guess what i'm going to tell you something even if you got a version four and you don't do the things we did, you're gonna hate the way it flies, okay? In ground effect, UPS stick, right over the top of the UPS stick, and then the B 
beautiful windsock that needs to be replaced because it's all ripped up. By the way, guys, if you're curious, that is not a windsock. It's actually a kite tail. Mm -hmm. And they are tubular and they catch wind. I used to have calibrated wind socks for PPG and they were quite expensive. I mean, they were still cheap, but they would wear out because they were made from used up wings. And when I say wings, I mean a paragliding wing, which most people would call it a parachute. A little bit of slip, a little bit of slip. Guys, if you try to slip on this thing virgin, you will hate it. It will not slip and it will slip very badly if it does. Okay, now I haven't even shown grass ops yet because you see my little bounce onto the runway or onto the grass. Yep. Full up elevator, let's see if we can do it. A Little bit of throttle, very bouncy, rough grass. Uh, we'll have to do that again, guys. I know we can get grass ops just fine with this, but my grass just happens to be coming in right now. Yeah, if you had good grass. If you had good grass, why'd you be doing this? <laughs> but the nice thing I was gonna say about the changes that you wind. made. Look at this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's See guys, cool. rough and all does just fine. Yeah. Okay. You could do it. Now we'll go over here to the front yard where we've got a little bit shorter grass. Okay. So full up elevator, getting a uh, getting a little bit of speed. And we'll try, oh, see, that's where you wanna watch out is if you catch a low point, you're gonna be in trouble. Now, throttle cuts on. Don't let the low voltage alarm warn you prematurely because if you're into it hard trying to get over bumps like this, show the people the bumps I'm dealing with. We're talking about yeah, big clumps of grass. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Okay, so the, the clumps of grass are gonna get you every time, no matter how nice you're set up on your landing gear or your wheels or anything like that. Which, by the way, you'll want to stay tuned to the very end of the video for my wheel repair. You guys will get a kick out of it. I'm 100% certain. Okay, get up on the mains. There it is, guys. Beautiful takeoff. You may notice the absence of flaps. That is true. And I normally would be complaining about it, but the J3 Cub doesn't have flaps. It just has outboard ailerons. And I think some of the really modified ones they aren't Cubs anymore. They aren't J3 Cubs at least. They would be considered a different plane. But boy, that white and red really looks good up against the clouds. It does. Oh yeah, and you can do aerobatic stuff with this. But I'm telling you guys, I have not had a plane where I felt so good about the way it flies now compared to the way our Virgin Maiden flight went. For, I can't, honestly, I can't think of many. Well, and what I was starting to say is you can make it fly good just by the mixes and stuff that you did. You don't have to replace all yeah. the servos and get a new to, ESC. Like nope. you don't have to do all that stuff. It's just a mix. Yep. It's a mix in your radio system and you don't even have to have a Spectrum radio to do it. But if you have a Spectrum radio and you're using an NX10, an NX8, NX6, then you should be able to copy. It's a very common setup. I'm gonna go over the top and then down into the low right over the ego killing zone. Look at that, I would have crashed. I would have had such bad coupling. There's no way I would have been able to take that maneuver. Mm -mm. Okay, so now it's beeping. We're probably getting, and look at that. That's an eight minute flight time on 1300. And as soon as I get out of throttle, it stops, it stops chirping at me. Six, five, four, three, two, three. <laughs> Didn't even show thrust reverse on our mains because I forgot I had it. But yes, there is thrust reverse and the thrust reverse is probably not necessary unless of course you use the included float. So we're gonna go ahead and go back to forward thrust. See if we can get a beautiful, I'm kind of with the wind here. So forgive me guys for being lame. Guys, if you haven't figured out why I make that sharp turn there, I just wanna fly around. Man, it looks so gorgeous. These clouds are perfect for filming. I'm flying over a cherry right now. It's just over my left wing, okay? And that's one thing you're gonna get with this plane is you're gonna think you got a powerhouse because it seems like it should. And just cause you think it is, doesn't mean it is, guys. You're on 3S, 1300 milliamp hour. That is not a very big package of power for a big plane, folks. That is a big plane, make no mistake about it. I'm gonna bleed off a lot of my inertia, let that light wing loading take it and then right there. Slow it down just so I don't have to chase it. And even in the grass, it does modestly well. Now, I'm gonna admit something. I've crashed that plane three times. Mm -hmm. It looks almost brand new, it sounds almost brand new, and you're gonna love how I fixed it. But the truth is, straight out of the box, 
Straight up virgin maiden flight was terrible. I hated the way it flew. And we took it from zero to hero. Here, we're gonna come over here. By basically doing this, okay? We set up two mixes and they were on the whole time. Rudder to aileron, minus 18, minus 18. And aileron to rudder at 50%. We never do those mixes anymore. We used to do it all the time. This plane demands it with that little bit of dihedral and then the short body, the thing has tons of leverage on the yaw axis and all it does is it rolls the plane. It rolls the plane and twists the tail and it's very wonkadelic, okay? So, and I gotta say, that's an eight minute timer that we went about a minute some change past on 1300 3S guys. We're not talking about a powerhouse here. We're talking about cheap to battery. We're talking about an economical plane to buy and a beautiful flight experience. And all you have to do is use a smaller battery than they recommend. Mm -hmm. If you use a 2200, a 2200 3S, which is what I started on, that's what they recommend, it's gonna fly bad even though the CG is perfect. I don't understand it, it doesn't even make sense. And you're gonna darn near rip the end of your battery off getting it out. I wrapped a piece of Velcro around it and it's all in plastic. It's not foam, foam, plastic, plastic. It's plastic, 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 and some foam on the bottom. But the thing is, you can't get it out. It's really hard to get it out. So if you do a 1300, not only is it easy, but it CG's out perfect. Your tail heavy on the front, your, your nose heavy on the back, somewhere in the middle, it's perfect. If you do 2200, you would think it's gonna be fine and it should handle the capacity, should be fine with that wing loading. And don't hear me wrong, you can use 2200, but just when you get into it and you start flying and you feel the elevator just being wonkadelic, you'll know exactly what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. So just use a smaller, cheaper battery, like it's the best solution. And you still get a good amount of flight time if you ask me. Now, could you use two 1300s in series and have a 2600? Probably, but you need to favor them back. So you're gonna have to put the body of the battery back, stuff a little bit of foam in there, cause then you'll be able to get them in and out. And then you would do a parallel adapter, not a series adapter. That'd be you know, way too much. Success would catch on fire. So what do I think of this plane? I think I'm gonna put it up and do one more sorties because I absolutely love it. And I think I'm gonna try to take off from this relatively rough surface here. I'm gonna see if I can get it going. Throttle cuts off. I'm gonna go into reverse thrust and just push back. Okay, then I'm gonna go forward thrust. Yep, there it is, guys. Look at that. Backyard flyer, eat your heart out, guys. Absolutely love it. Guys, if you've never experienced a J3 Cub, this is like how I began my flying experiences with J3 Cubs. It was an ultra micro, and I love that plane and I love the experience, guys. That's one of the reasons why I don't mind the fact that this doesn't have huge Tundra tires because it shows and looks the part. It's a general aviation, extremely popular aircraft. And yes, they are making these things. People have these all over the place, tandem seats. This is totally the type of plane that we could fly in my backyard when we get the full scale strip done. Slip, 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 slip. And then we'll just get into the throttle just a little bit and then thrust reverse it and put it on the spot where you want it. It's so much fun. Thrust reverse, totally unnecessary. You can definitely tell it's not very ballsy because on 3S, you're just not gonna get that much oomph. You may have noticed I trimmed my prop. Well, you probably won't have a trim prop and you're probably gonna have a little bit better efficiency because I guarantee I worked my bearings straightening my prop shaft. <laughs> now, seriously, and all joking aside, guys, I own it when I crash planes. When I crash them and it's ugly, we try our best to share what is bad with the plane and what is bad with Pilot Brian here, okay? But the truth is, it was a combination. And I think you're gonna understand that when you watch it. Mm -hmm. So hold me accountable where I'm accountable and hold the plane accountable where it's accountable. The coupling was palpable. It caused the crash along with poor piloting, okay? So stay tuned, learn something. If you're a brand new pilot, if you don't know what coupling is, I'm gonna just put my throttle hold on just to make sure throttle cut. It's when you're playing, you give rudder and instead of just yawing flat like it is now and kind of like turning like this, maybe a little bit of movement with a mix, okay? Instead of that, it goes like this. It goes wonk, 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 
wonk, wonk, and that coupling, it kind of makes the plane roll on this axis of the dihedral, okay? Because when you yaw the plane, what happens? That wing goes faster than this wing, which means it produces more lift, which means this one stalls out more, and you exaggerate that issue until you get into a high speed stall or a flat spin. And that's literally what happens. So what do you do to correct that? You give a little bit of rudder and you give contrary ailerons to keep the wings tipped flat. And that's what the 18% negative left and negative right does. That's what we showed you earlier. Now, contrary to that, when you roll the plane, what happens? Well, you get a little bit of an adverse yaw, and that would be the other way of describing coupling, but it's still coupling because it's two controlled channels, primary controls that are being coupled, okay? So you go like this, and then it just wants to yaw, it, and it's just, it's awkward, and it does weird things, and it's very challenging as a pilot to overwhelm that because it's just like wonky behavior. So what do you do? I've added 50% mix here, so if I give, 30, if I give 50% on the ailerons, I'm giving 25% on the rudder, the same direction. Crazy, right? So the only time that gets pretty wonkadelic is when you're flying upside down. Then it gets a little bit weird. And that's part of the reason why I have gotten away from doing mixes, because I do fly more often. But look at the beautiful scale details you get. Guys, this plane has been crashed three times. I literally welded it together. My foam plane. <laughs> I used a welder to fix it. Okay, so if you wanna see me in a welding hat, just stay tuned. I love this plane, I love the way it flies, I love the way it looks, and I know you're gonna love it too, but you gotta do the mixes, and I don't, I don't almost never say that because it's such a subjective thing. Trust me on this, set it, turn it off, fly it, and you'll darn near crash the thing taken off because mm -hmm. it will yaw off and flip itself, and that's what I did for the first crash. Stay tuned, you can see it. All right guys, if you have questions about this beautiful J3 Cub with glass cockpit and beautiful scale pilot figurine, instrument clusters, beautiful motor, detail, detail, and more detail, then look no further than the links in the video description below. You can get one for your very own. I'm gonna just go ahead and spin up the prop. And if you wanna get one of these and have it in your hangar, you'll be supporting Brian Phillips RC when you order from the links in the video description below. We'll obviously link to the 1300 3S that we used. And I, I won't even link to the 2200 because it's the wrong, it's the wrong, wrong battery, battery for this plane. Yeah. Uh, also, throttle cuts back on. NX-10 has been great. You don't need the 10 to fly this plane, but you need the 10 to fly other planes. As far as I'm concerned, good many after bad if you're getting the NX-7E because you only think you're gonna get a couple planes. Guys, you're in denial. If yeah. you're sucked into this hobby and you know you're gonna be in it for a while, the 70 is a great stop gap, admittedly. But just do it. It's not that much more money. Just get what you need. You're like one model difference in price between this and the 70. Then you're not held up by your transmitter. It's like the easiest answer that you don't want to answer when you're brand new in the hobby, okay? If you're brand new in the hobby and you're getting this plane, this plane looks like it's gonna be super easy and it's got some bad habits. We'll teach you how to mix them out, okay? If you're returning to the hobby and you fly this, you'll be like, that flies like a three channel, totally unexpectedly. You're right. Use the mixes and we'll help it tame, okay? So we've actually done something good for once in one of our videos. We showed you how to fix a couple of different problems. We hope that we do that occasionally for you in the Unbox Build radio setups. If you need help setting up these, one of the most expensive, and necessary tools. The NX-10 is a great place to be. We're gonna be there for a while. We may end up stepping up to the NX-20 at some point so we have a bigger screen, but it's still gonna do all the same features. We don't really need the additional channels, but the bigger screen would be nice for us because we film it, okay? So if you see us get into an NX-20, don't freak out. You can still do the 10, you can still do the eight. But remember, if you get the eight, you're gonna run short on channels on something as small as the 80 millimeter F-16. Okay, so just keep in mind, you're gonna need the channels sooner than you think. And then you're spending another 550 bucks to get what you could have got the first time, and all you did was save 200 bucks. Well, 200 and, with 300 bucks plus 550 is 850 bucks. Now spread that across, across your 10 planes or your 20 planes, and you're talking about a lot more money, folks. You're talking 85 bucks, 
the, the 42 and a half bucks per plane. If you just get this and you have the same 10 to 20 planes, you're talking about like 55 bucks if you got 10 or, or like 27 and a half bucks spread across 20 planes. It's cheap, it becomes a rounding error if you get enough planes. I get almost 250 planes in this. I'm gonna run out of model memory soon. It costs like a dollar or two per plane. And the only reason I beat you over the head with these details is because I know it's a tough one when you're brand new in the hobby. But if you know you're hooked, don't mess around. Just get what you need. Trust me, it's good advice. And if you end up with a jetty transmitter two years down the road and you spend 2,800 bucks on it or three grand or four grand on it, more power to you. You're still going to be glad you have this because you're going to get the bind and flies from Horizon when they come out new because you watch Brian Phillips RC. Or you're going to get the you know, brand new FMS model that you love, that general aviation beauty that you thought you wanted, but you were like, I'm waiting for version four. <laughs> it's right here. All right, guys, we answered all the questions. More flight footage, crash footage, and welding helmets coming next. Stay tuned right here on Brian Phillips RC. Thanks so much. If you guys want to support us in other ways, we have Patreon, YouTube members. Those are monthlies. PayPal, one-time support, and then... YouTube, super thanks for one-time support. But the best way, and we say this all the time and people probably think we're just blowing smoke. I didn't want to do any of these begging sites, but we do it because people have asked for decade almost now. So we offer it up as an option. We still think it's better to just buy this plane. Even if your wife is threatening to leave you, you might want to figure out a way to tell her about the snakes in the basement. The beer truck's right around the corner. Get, get it, it's really good. You'll like it, it's awesome. If you like general aviation, you'll love it. If you like Tundra Flyers, you're going to love it. If you like something to super scale, you're going to love it. But do the mixes. Take my word for it. Stay tuned. More coming. YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. Look what we got today. 1.4 meter J3 Cub from FMS. This thing is super scale looking. Absolutely gorgeous. Glass canopy. It's all plastic, of course. And then we've got this beautiful scale engine details here gas caps and all this thing is really true to scale true to form this thing comes equipped with reflex it's got some rock hard landing gear that are super small now i could see putting some tundra tires on here if you like showing this as an off-road airplane well i guess it is an airplane after all but we're gonna see how it does with the stock stuff and you guys can make up your own minds uh, we did have a couple of fitment issues on the plastic parts and you can see that in the unbox build radio setup. But without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and show you a little taxi and then take off and give this a flight. This is our maiden flight, reflex equipped, AR620, look at that up on the mains, no problem. Whoa, that rudder kicked it so hard. I was not ready for that. <laughs> Beautiful so far. That's 50% throttle, 3S2200 spot on on the cg and truthfully there's only one place that battery's going and it's right where it's stuffed <laughs> yep. full throttle here coming up and coming out boy there's a lot of rudder going on on this plane we put it in the right hole didn't we well i don't know it was the one that we recommended <laughs> okay so we're gonna go to the bowl please that sun just poked out right at the it worst did. possible time. Okay, having to ride the elevator just a little bit. Again, don't have my trims worked out. That's rudder. Look at that thing turn. I'm barely using the ailerons. I'm gonna give it a little bit of down trim here. There we go. And got a little bit of wind today. About four steps out for me, please. The other way, to your left. Sorry, directionally. Hold still, that's good. Do you hear that, Al? Mm -hmm. So rock hard landing gear make for usually pretty bouncing landings as you can see. And just to show you, the ailerons are very effective, but man, there's some crazy coupling. Okay, so I'm gonna try some mix with the rudder. 40% mix, aileron to rudder. Let's see how that does. Because it's just so crazy, the coupling, when I give it, when I give it ailerons, ooh, that feels way better. Surprisingly better. Now I gotta say the 3S power is fine. It's just not a fast plane. But then again, okay, hold on. 
I gotta get a feel for this because it feels like when I get out of the throttle, does the nose drop drastically? I can't tell if it's the wind screwing with me or if it's just, you kinda gotta fly the thing. I love the way it looks. I mean, it's absolutely fantastic looking. Mm -hmm. Just, I'm having to really ride the elevator a lot. I feel like I'm giving a lot of rudder, or excuse me, a lot of elevator, trying to do a one wheel and it's just like, whoa, that was nuts, folks. Okay, so now just out of curiosity, I'm gonna go ahead and give some trim back. Cause you see how it's wanting to go downhill on me? Okay, so now we're more central. Hard on the throttle, out of the throttle. Just trying to see if it'll glide straight for us. Oh man, no sunglasses for that turn. I should have shut one eye. Man, I love the look though. Absolutely fantastic looking. Up and over. And then rolling to the left. Do you guys see how that, that tail just goes all over the place when you're trying to do rolls? Maybe it wouldn't a real cub. It's got kind of a short body to it, you know? This is not a super cub. It's not a carbon cub, it's just a cub. Love the white and red though. I didn't know how I was gonna like it in the sky, but I'm just absolutely in love with it. Let's do an inside pass here, camera crew. You're good where you are. Okay. Just a little bit of rudder there. Riding the elevator, just like the last few times. Hard on the throttle so I can make it out of the hole. Do you guys notice the uh, bugs in our little flying area here? Mm -hmm. By the way, that's full throttle. So, I mean, if you're looking for a speed demon, don't look at this one because it's just kind of slow, but I love it slow. But in real life, it, it wouldn't be a speed demon either, right? No, not really. It's flying good. It's handling the little bit of wind we've got mm -hmm. just fine. But I mean, I love the way it looks. I mean, it's gorgeous. Yeah. I just don't like having to ride the elevator like this. I want you guys to be able to see this, what I'm talking about. I'm not used to riding the elevator like this. And it's not just a trim issue because I feel like it's either too far down or too far up. And see, like I'm out of the, out of the elevator there and you could see how it kind of balanced on the mains for me. But then I just feel like it doesn't like finding the middle, the comfortable zone, you know? Where you're not constantly yeah. worrying about it. But it's just unusual because I feel like usually the reflex will help us get a really nice stable flight. But this one, it could just be a little bit of wind too. I wonder if that's what we're dealing with. Downdrafts, let's try grass ops. Oh, not bad at all, surprising. You are in stabilized mode, right? Yeah, pretty sure. I'm gonna double check now though. Yes, I am. Okay. Okay, so I did half as much elevator couple, or excuse me, not elevator, but rudder to aileron couple. Man, that thing looks so good. I love seeing the shadow like that. Whoa, there was a huge downdraft. I barely had enough aileron to get away from that downdraft. What are the chances, folks? It looks dead calm, but it is absolutely not. not. Or maybe I stalled. Do you think that's what it was? Coming over the hill? Maybe. Into the... Let's see how this does again. I wanna try this and see if I can get those wheels to calm down. You see how much rudder input I'm giving it? Yeah. Holy crap, there it goes. Okay, throttle cuts on. Let's go see if it survived. But I'm just saying, it feels really wonkadelic on the elevator axis, and I'm hoping we don't have like a linkage that's giving us an issue, but we'll go up and check it. Kind of guessing the prop would have been damaged in that because I saw a pretty big poof of dust. Yeah. Um, but just looking at the elevator, you can see it's kind of pointed downward a little bit. And then of course the ailerons look fine, rudder looks fine. Steerable tail wheel looks fine. Kind of assuming we didn't damage anything actually. Okay, throttle cuts on, camera crew's gonna hold that for me. Hey, that did really good, surprisingly. Yeah. Although we did chip the prop. How is that even possible? Wrong, um, probably. Yeah, probably. But I'm just saying, my issue right now is with the elevator. It just feels like I can't quite get it to neutralize and I really want it neutral because I want to just let this thing glide. So let's see if we can do it. We have 
as you can see, there is wind going. Mm -hmm. It doesn't look like it on camera much, but there's a little bit of wind. So let's just try taking off. We're actually going with the wind here, so I might have to bad taxi. Unusual that we would have a crash like that, especially on an easy flying plane. I thought this thing would be super, super easy flying. It's a little wonky on the ground. It's a little wonk. I'm gonna just put my trim back to the center. I had this trim, just so you guys know, when I was first doing my first couple passes, I ended up trimming it and it went way up here to like that. I ended up taking about half of it out and now I'm gonna go back to neutral. And uh, we don't normally talk about trims a lot because a lot of that ends up being somewhat subjective and how you got your control. You know, you've got that little clevis you have to set and just depending, okay, so that's eight minutes right now, just so you know. Okay. So depending on where your clevis ends up, that's gonna dictate how the plane behaves, okay? So with regard to this plane, get it up on mains. Look at that, really just goes nuts with the, do you see the P factor? That yeah. can't be the P factor. No way. We are with the wind though. Man, I love the way that looks. Yeah. I'm gonna do an inside pass. Yeah, except I got the UPS sticks, so it's gonna be a hard cut. Oh! You see what I'm talking about? Like it just gets nuts. Yeah. And I'm sure I probably damaged it. Uh, or maybe I didn't. This might be the world's you most resilient. The, oh, that's just the door. That's the, no, that's just the, the thing yeah. for the receiver. I can't Did believe. Did you really not break it? Yeah, the wings kind of pulled out. Yeah, there's a crack right there. I don't know, this thing is just wonkadelic. I don't understand what's going on. And then this popped out. And I'll see if I can get that push back down. I knew that was gonna be a breaking part. I just don't really understand exactly where to put my finger on why this thing feels wonky. Mm. But it feels wonky. It looks wonky and not in like a, not in a doing something wrong way, like a weird Yeah, way. I don't know, maybe I am. Sometimes it just seems like as a pilot, you know, there's some days you have off days and there's some days- hey, Your spring popped on your landing gear. Oh, okay. Before you set it back down. Good idea, thank you for that catch. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can get this. And I don't know, while you're fixing that, because there's been times that the windsock has been almost straight down, but if you're watching the smoke in the background, there's a lot of wind up there, because it's So you were fast. thinking this is wind. I'm not necessarily, know. and look, we've got this pulled out, so we'll find out if that actually causes a problem. Just lost a little red piece of something underneath. Oh, really? I mean, look. It's probably just a clip. All right, okay. I'm taking off. Ooh, yeah. She's vibrating now. Now it's a gasser. <laughs> I kind of can't believe it's flying. It's kind of sweet, actually. <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> it's going to totally break on us. Well, that'll be fun. But I don't know if I'm just like over controlling it or if I did something wrong. But it's really frustrating for me as a pilot to have what should be an easy flying plane just kick me in the butt. Look at that nice hole we'll hit. I know you were thinking I was gonna crash into it. No. Oh, it could be the linkage on the actual wing vibrating. It's causing a resonance. I want you to be off the runway, please. Which way? Thank you. Let's try landing in the wind this time. Okay. You guys see what I'm talking about? Rock hard tires, that's why we, we don't like them. Rock hard like that. Okay, let's go look at this again, guys. This is really weirding me out because you know I'm a good enough pilot to be able to handle a cub. But maybe this cub has just got some bad behaviors about it. I do remember when we unboxed it, I had to work the elevator. And so I wonder if maybe there's just something about the elevator that's not quite kosher. Like maybe I need to break that foam hinge a little bit more. It sure looks like it's moving free. I don't feel like there's any delay or latency there. I also definitely know this popped out. So there's that. That might be kind of a bad thing to fly like, you know, oh. with that loose. Yeah. I'll just stick it back in and see what happens. Definitely getting some vibration. I don't know if, oh, there's that bent prop shaft. That'll do it usually too. Um, but I gotta say, you know, sometimes you get these planes and you just think they're gonna be perfect. And then they're not for whatever reason. So let's go bend the shaft straight and then we'll be right back. Stay tuned. Okay. So we're going to just fix this right now. So this thing was loose. So I'm just going to put some China glue on there. Should be no problem to get that fixed. Uh, we did open a new bottle of FMS China glue. So this stuff is really good. I like it a lot. It's been, except for when it does that, where it just goops all over you. And then you got to go get your 
Favorite tool that you've ever had in RC and that'd be Q-tips. So we're trying to figure out why this plane is acting weird. And I don't know if it's just uh, something about the controls or maybe the reflex isn't quite right, but I can definitely say it flies weird. And I've flown a lot of Cubs over the years and I generally am a sucker for Cubs. So I don't want you guys to think that I don't like Cubs and I'm trying to give this like a bad name or something, but I'm like really bummed. I wanted this thing to be so much and it's just not performing the way I'd expected. And FMS makes a good plane. So I don't know if I've done something wrong or maybe something is broken. I did crack the wing too, so we should look at that too. So I'm just gonna get that little bit. Normally I wouldn't stick it together like that, but given the fact that we've got a couple of spots to glue and we've got limited light left, I'm gonna go ahead and work. Okay, so the battery's still in, throttle cut's on. So you can see where this, this broke free, okay? And then this is broke here, right there. You see that? We haven't, we haven't had a crash that I can just fix quick in like two minutes lately. And uh, so we, we honestly, we don't show it very often because we haven't had, the other day we crashed the EC1500 and just totally destroyed it. It was like garbage, gone. Um, but this was different. This was just like kind of a rough landing into the ground sideways. <laughs> but we're going it. But also I gotta say, bent pr prop shaft, that is generally not okay. So we're gonna have to try to resolve that too. I actually don't know that I care about this just quite yet. It's not ideal, obviously. And once this glue sets up, I can go ahead and push that back together. This here, I'd like to fold back down because it just bent a little bit on me. And probably what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take and undo this wing and re-glue down there where it's attached. I don't know if it's just maybe not attached well, Maybe that's why it's just weird behaving. Um, and the elevator, I can't necessarily say anything good or bad about it because it seems free enough when I move the elevator stick and it's got snappy enough response. So I just, don't, I don't believe there's a problem there um, beyond piloting. It could be just a pilot error. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can bend straight the prop shaft you guys probably haven't seen me do one of these quick repairs in a while because we haven't done them. So I've got my screwdrivers here and I got a crescent wrench. Throttle cut is on. I do trust the throttle cut. I'm re triple checking it. It is on. Okay, so obviously that bend is not okay. So I'm gonna just take a screwdriver. Uh, that one might go, no, nope, it's a little bit too big. I'll go to a smaller one, like a 1.5 millimeter. Put that in there break the nut free. We'll just leave that on the ground for now. And then we'll just take this off and see how this motor mount goes together. So we'll pull that out. We do have a little bit of a disparity here. So you see that snapped off part? There'll be a little bit of a balance issue there, but I don't think it's huge, huge. This is just a standoff. And then you can see right there how it bent. So we got lucky. Now, normally guys, I wouldn't suggest you do this, just replace the component that's broke but I'm in a hurry and you guys are gonna do the same thing. So I can suggest not to do it, but you're gonna do it too, just like I am. Okay, so I'm gonna bite onto this with my tool and I'm gonna just give her a real gentle bend. Yep, but you see how it's twisting on me? Gotta hold onto this. I don't wanna mar my threads anymore and I have to to get the job done. And I'm just hoping the motor mount isn't broken. If the motor mount's broken, then we'll have to get dug into it a whole lot more. Okay, so we'll see if I got it. Still got a little bit of a bend. Ooh, the other thing is I could probably take this whole thing off, one, two, three screws that are accessible right there, and that would save me taking the whole cowl off. All I do is just spin it so I can identify the low point, spin it toward my belly. And I wanna get this leverage as far out as I can, but I don't wanna break the motor off, so I have to press in while I'm pulling toward the camera crew here, okay? So I'm gonna just hold the fuse. Yep, popped. So we're gonna see, we're gonna see what's going on down here. It might be that the motor mount is broke free. Oh, that Phillips screw's a uh, different size evidently. So we're gonna go to three millimeter, see if that works. Nope, we wanna go to four millimeter. And this just says four millimeters. I don't even know if yours is probably not sized the same way. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull these four screws out and see what we can find. 
as you can see, our beautiful sun is setting over the horizon. Really bummed about this plane. I mean, it's like, it's a plane that I was super looking forward to and uh, just, just not living up to my expectations, AKA I crashed it. Um, but if you guys are brand new to Brian Phillips RC, what we do is we unbox, we build, we radio set them up. We try to get you, get you in the air uh, in a way that's gonna help you step by step. And so that's part of the reason why we're showing this crash here, not because we're proud of our crashes. It's kind of embarrassing to be honest. Um, but I just, I wanna get to the bottom of, is there something wrong with it? Because all the correction directions were the same as what we expected. Okay, so the screws are right there when I get all freaked mm -hmm. out and forget where they are. Okay, so let's go ahead and pull this beautiful cowl off. I can't believe that didn't break, it didn't. Okay, motor mount. The motor mount does not appear to be broken, guys. Okay, so you can see the motor here. Yeah, Predator, everything looks good there. So you can see, now I can support it while I'm trying to bend this shaft back. Like if you see what I'm doing, I'm just spinning it around, looking for the point that I want so I can work it. And then I'm gonna come on here like this. And I can hold the stator and protect the stator and give it really good strength now. I should be able to bend that just a little bit. Now, you could also take this off, put it in a vise. The other trick you can do that will work in most cases is you can take a second crescent wrench. And remember, when these shafts get bent, they usually bend out at the tip, especially with these weird offsets like this. This thing pulls it out to the end of oh. the shaft. So it's gonna create a lever. Okay, so what you can probably do is you can spin this and then you can probably just hang on right here, okay? And what you, you remember, don't mar your threads. It's just aluminum, okay? So I'm gonna try to brace this with my index finger and my thumb. And then I'm gonna go in just past the threads. And this is gonna kind of mar the threads a little bit, but I'm gonna try hard to get leverage on this. I'm trying to pull away from myself. You guys see what I just did there? I bent that. Now look at that. It's not perfect, but it's pretty dang close. It's a lot better. It's a lot better. It should fly like that. Okay, throttle cuts off. You can see a little bit of wi wiggle in there, but the wiggle is back here. So we'll see if that translates to the actual output shaft area. I'm gonna try a little bit bend back. Right here, I'm gonna just go toward the camera crew. Okay, so now let's see. Did we get it? Throttle cuts off. There's a little bit of a walk in it, but I think we're gonna be okay. Throttle cut is back on. So now obviously at this point, we need to put the cowl back on. You can see we crushed a little bit here. We try to show how the plane's damaged. I can't believe how well that plane did. Yeah. Um, and yet it's still frustrating. Okay, look at this guys. See this, how it's pulled apart like that? If I put that together, I could probably pin that with a couple toothpicks, but I'm gonna wait until after we get a couple flights done. I'll bring it inside and just clean it up after off camera because there's no root. There's nothing really special about that. I just gotta take this wing and glue underneath when we're done. But for now, let's see if we can get this cow back on because we're gonna have a beautiful sunset. So folks, if you're brand new to Brian Phillips RC, you wanna help support what we do, uh, which is trying to help get people back in the air. People that have left the hobby for whatever reason, maybe family reasons or work reasons, or you know, you had a, hiatus from the hobby for 20 years while your kids were growing up or whatever it was, uh, which we hope you guys don't do that, but a lot of people do, or maybe you moved from the area where you had good access to a flight field. We wanna help get you guys back in the hobby. And then we also wanna help people that are brand new to the hobby, just trying to figure out how to do some of this stuff. We're gonna show you step by step. And that's what we do. So that means sometimes, you know, swallowing my pride, showing you a couple of crashes. I just can't believe how easy it was to crash in those weird circumstances. I think what it is, is I was just over controlling the heck out of it because that rudder has some crazy throw, you know? So do you want to adjust your expo? No. Okay. No, it's just, it's just a weird combination of power and thrust angle and all that stuff. And like I said, I'm going to come back in, I'll glue this down to get that little bit taken care of off camera. All I got to do is just basically squeeze some glue in here and then I'll just tape it in position, you know, let it okay. set up overnight. Should be fine to fly for tonight. So if you wanna watch over here, we're gonna slide this on. That's just a spacer. And then the prop, if this was way out of balance, what I can do is the bottom of this is like sandpaper. I'm gonna take that nasty edge off. You see what I just did there? Okay, 
Then I'm going to come over here. Okay. I want to do that same edge. So it'll be this edge. And I'm just going to take a little bit off. Yes, this is like my <laughs> wife's counter. Okay. It's okay. And I don't see that part. Now that I've done that, well, I'll just do a little bit more here because there's, I had kind of a fuzzy spot on the prop. You see what I did? Just took the sharp edge off. And then I took the sharp edge off, so I'm gonna just do a little bit more. You could do that with a sanding block or maybe on a, you know, like a sanding wheel or maybe a grinder. And that's just gonna take that edge off. The only reason I did that is because it chipped when we hit the dirt, which is crazy. Then we should be able to put that back on. We'll go ahead and secure it. And then we'll just do a quick test on vibration, see how terrible it is. If it's terrible, we might need to take a little bit more off one side or the other. Okay, in we go and then turn it. I mean, I love the way it looks when it's flying. It just doesn't quite do what I want. Okay, throttle cut is on. Real quick check underneath. That glue will eventually hold right there. It's not yet, but it will eventually. Um, what the heck? There's like glitter all what? over the counter. Was that from this? No. Okay, I'm gonna say, we have a rule about glitter in this house. Is it blue? Huh? Is it blue glitter? No, it's gold. Oh. That's why I'm like weirded out because I don't know if it came from this. Oh, that looks pretty good. Okay, now camera crew, I'm gonna go ahead and throttle up. Okay. Still got a bit of a gasser going. Okay, so at this point you could, you could assume that there's maybe, what I'm doing is just watching the prop as this spins. I'm gonna go ahead and go real slow so I can watch the prop, the tip. Okay, oh, yeah, that's still a pretty big walk. Okay, so I'm seeing a little bit of forward and a little bit of backward movement. And so a lot of times what you can do is you can actually straighten that. But also I think what's going on, I think what's going on is that we just have a little bit of extra material on the end. The throttle cut is on and tested. Okay, so watch this. See this little bit? Watch this. I'm just gonna literally cut it with scissors to get a sharp edge. And then now that we've got that sharp edge, I'm gonna come back around and I'm gonna just do the same thing here. You see what I did there? Mm -hmm. Cut that little bit of black fluffy stuff off. Okay. And now we'll come back and test again. Throttle cuts off. And I think it's just gonna probably vibrate because of the bent shaft a little bit. And then I'm sure our prop is out of balance. So with that, we're gonna go back outside and we're gonna keep flying for just a minute longer. And uh, we appreciate you guys sticking around. We'll be back in just a sec. Okay, so I just, I was thinking to myself, yeah, let's not dead stick land it too on top of all this. So I'm gonna pull off the bottom. I'm gonna show you what I did. I wrapped a strap around the battery so I could manipulate the battery out when we're done because that's one thing I noticed about this, this tray is it's notoriously difficult. And so it's not actually even got a strap in it. And so what I was thinking is I could spin this strap until it gets at the right angle where I can help pull out the battery. And you guys see what I'm doing right now? This is a plastic housing all around. So there is no give to it. And that's part of the reason why I put this FMS strap around here. See what I'm talking about? Look at the damage to the battery. It just catches that heat shrink. There's barely enough room to get that battery out. Now, I'm almost wondering if the CG needs to be a little bit more nose heavy than it actually is, but we did test it to the CG. We'll show mm -hmm. that in the Unbox Build Radio setup. So what I might do is just for grins, I'm gonna throw a 1300 3S in here because we had tons of flight time and no issues there, okay? So I don't need the Velcro on here, because look, once I plug this in, IC3 will go into the XT60, just plop this in, get it into the opening, center it. Oh, and look, we've got a place for a voltage alarm now. So I'm gonna throw a voltage alarm in. Voltage alarm is here, so we'll plug that in. And we don't really even care. Um, so yeah, 3.3 will be fine. Then we're gonna plop this back in and just trap it in place and snap it down, okay? Did I catch a wire? What is that? There's what? a tab. That's the smart lead. That's the smart lead I just caught. Are you kidding me? Of all things I could catch. Okay, so we're gonna see how that CG's right now. 
keeping in mind that we re-glued this wing right here, okay? And it's just still setting up a little bit. Show the people. Okay, yep. Okay, we've got nice calm weather, probably. It should be getting good now. So I'm just gonna grab this. We've had some pretty terrible weather. You see, that's as easy as, easy as just giving it a quick spin. See, pulls it right off. If you can even go over to the other side and pull that other side off. And if you want, you can leave it. And then once it dries, you can cut those off or pull them off with a pair of pliers. Now, if you're in a hurry, kind of like what we are, another trick you can do is you can put some tape right over this and hold it tight while you're doing your flight. But in my case, I think we're probably good to go. So we're gonna go fly it, but let's check the CG. Okay, we're on the back hole. Nose heavy, front hole, even. So maybe 1300 3S will be better. So we'll see outside. Okay, so this is how much battery we consumed. Yeah, 2200 3S, tons of battery left. 43%, we're at 3.8. So almost perfect storage voltage. And that'd be 2200 3S Gen 2. But you can fly it on a Gen 1 and then you get the benefit of the bounce lead. But just remember, it barely fits. So do something to help you pull it out, okay? Because if you don't pull out on time, it can cause all sorts of problems. See you outside. All right, folks, so 3S 1300 this time. We're gonna go ahead and take off. We do have our gasser going. <laughs> 1300 3S is fine, feels great. Feels really good, actually. And again, this is with like an out of balance prop, a bent prop shaft. 1300 3S is the way to go, guys. Look how nice it's doing. It's absolutely fantastic. I kind of like the noise. It's kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that motor mount. You guys see what I'm talking about? Look how clean that was. It just felt perfect. I'm not having to ride the elevator now. And this all glued up. What the heck? So I wonder if they just are putting people into too big of a battery. But it really felt pretty good on the CG, I thought, when we did our unbox. Mm -hmm. Did you think so? It looked like it. It looked fine. Okay, a little bit of rudder. How oh, beautiful. I'm going to actually do the 40% mix we did. So it basically automatically mixes in a little bit of rudder with the ailerons. It just behaves really nicely. Let's try auto leveling, okay? Now that we have crashed a few times. A few. So this is auto leveling with the reflex, okay? Just to show you, it does automatically level the plane. So it is gonna limit our bank angles. So there's gonna be mix on the rudder steer still, but that doesn't necessarily change the limits of the system. Okay, so when I let go, it's really slow to level. I noticed that about reflex, it takes longer to bring the plane level than like AS3X would snap it back pretty quick. But you might like that, okay? So roll, look at that, look at that guys. It just, it just swoops the plane, you see? Mm -hmm. What I'm talking about? Now when I get out of the throttle, how does it glide? It glides nicely, but I just feel like it's gonna still let you get into a weird stall. This asymmetric behavior. Okay, gasser, getting into the throttle. Well, it does kind of balance out though at least. Let's do a big, huge loop out of the throttle, right at the crest. It's fun to fly, but it just flies a lot different than I thought it would. Because if you've flown like the Carbon Cub, SS, or even the Carbon, excuse me, Carbon Cub S2, 1.3, you know, I figured it'd fly a lot like that. This thing is a lot harder to fly, especially if you put a 2200 in there. I gotta say the 1300 makes it totally different behavior. And it's not just different behavior because I crashed it three times. I wanna try to get up on the mains. Let's try a couple of touch and goes. Okay. We are out of the wind, admittedly. That might be a big factor. I don't know. I still don't think that. it was that big of a deal though. That's pretty good behavior though, guys. <laughs> I kinda like the gasser <laughs> myself. I think the what you want to do is just go crash it on your maiden yes. just so it gasses around like this. And it does kind of come into resonance when you get up the throttle, which is about perfect. 
sure it's super efficient. <laughs> It's, it's just so stupid that it, it <laughs> flies better now that I've crashed it. I do not understand it for a second, guys. And I don't think it's me just changing my behavior. I think the 1300 3S is just absolutely phenomenal size for this. Yeah. I think it's a big part of it. And then, of course, we did lose a little bit of janky wind. Okay? A little so bit. So if you guys look at this flag, hard on the throttle. See, it's just, it's almost straight down now. And it is, it is a gorgeous looking plane. I mean, if you guys are used to the big Tundra tires, you might not be a big fan of the smaller tires, but I think it looks good. Had to get into my uh, nitro there a little bit hard. And by the way, the reason I think that the motor is so noisy is because did you see how long the motor mount is? Inside pass, if you don't mind. Oh man, that looks so dang good. It does. I just don't feel like you're flying that differently or that the conditions have changed that much. That drastic. No. I, I agree. I don't think it is either. But, you know, look how much better it behaves on the ground, though. I know. I mean, I got to say, that's, that's appreciable. And I'm giving a lot of rudder to see if I can induce that weird behavior that got me into the crashes. Okay, I'm going to do a stall turn here. And no, that wasn't dying. Just kind of sounds like it. <laughs> sounds like it is. Now, also, you may be noticing the absolute absence of flaps on this plane. That's because it's a J3 Cub. They don't have flaps in real life. But you know what? I like flaps. See, look, on the main, still rock hard tires in that thick, heavy grass. Had to give a little bit of elevator to keep it from sucking into the grass. Oh man, I love that pass right there. I love that pass where you can see through the fuse. Through, yeah. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And folks, I got to say, it just feels really good now. <laughs> I'm telling you, I, it's almost like it was nose heavy because they gave us too big of a range on the CG. We were probably getting a little bit of tailwind on some critical areas, which definitely doesn't help. I know I got downdrafted on at least one of those passes. But I mean... It was just wonky though. It was, it was wonky. Like, I don't feel like the elevator is dead nuts center right now. And when I let go of the sticks, look where it goes. Right. A little bit of roll. That could bit. be from my wing being Maybe, detached. Yeah, slightly. right, partially. I'm probably not going to do a lot of trimming on the ailerons. <laughs> yeah, maybe I could trim it just a hair. I mean, there's a little wet, juicy glue up there. <gasps> you know what it could be? And I didn't even think about it. What? I wonder if the wing was twisted. Before I crashed, and when we crashed it, it unsprung <laughs> the not. wing. That could totally be a factor I didn't even think of. That would be That would be ridiculous. Bizarre. It'd be very unusual. But if we unsprung the wing, that could be what happened because now it's all of a sudden behaving like, I mean, it's a kind of a night and day difference, I mm -hmm. would say. I hope it's not just the wind though, because then I would feel like a pansy, guys. I don't fancy myself like an amazing pilot. I know some of you guys think that, but I'm really not. I'm pretty average at best. Oh, I mean, I've crashed into that exact spot like hundreds of times and maybe seven or eight on camera. <laughs> I am really enjoying flying this plane though, guys. Really enjoying it. And that's even after crashing. I gotta say, I mean, we fly a lot of planes on, Brian Phillips RC. Oh, and we do have a voltage alarm in there too, we do. just to be clear. And I mean, I don't fly that much, but I fly with you a lot, or I watch you fly yeah, a lot. Yeah, you can tell when I like it. And I, yeah, and I can tell when the plane is wonky and when. Yeah, because I'm like struggling to get it or, under control. Yeah. Like that was just weird earlier. Well, and it's like you saw how much I trimmed it down, then I trimmed it up, and it was like it still refused to fly worth a crap. Yeah. Now I'm like off the sticks, guys. Look at that. That right. is a and pretty good just, pass. A yeah. little bit of relaxation into the ground. That's not a, oh, there's our, I probably need to respect the timer though. This is a 1400 millimeter plane flying on a 1300 million, milliamp hour pack. That's pretty big disparity. A little bit of slip there. Don't need much actually. It slows down nicely. There it is, tricycle landing. But I mean, that was fine. It really is. And to be honest with you, I just don't, okay, so here's what I don't get, guys. 
And I know it probably sounds like I'm blowing smoke, but the truth is I actually really like this plane after I crashed it better. <laughs> That's not the way it should be though. No. Um, so I don't know if maybe there was a little bit of an asymmetry in the left and, and right wings, or if maybe when it broke, it was allowed to relax the angle of attack a little bit on the wing. But I gotta say, I'm like really happy with the way it flies and I can get the battery in and out. Right. Now, admittedly, sometimes the smart packs, throttle cut is on by the way. Admittedly, sometimes the smart packs, oh, and we did mix. Oh, that was a pretty good flight. Did you reset your timer? I wonder if I didn't. It never, it never went off. I I'm sorry, folks. And I don't remember when we started. Okay, so check this out. Video. One thing we did that we normally don't do anymore, like we almost never do this, is I set three mixes just to show kind of how to do it, but it turned out to really help on this plane. So 40% mix, and that would be aileron to rudder. And I'll be honest with you, you almost need to do a rudder to aileron, contrary mix as well, and that would keep the behaviors corresponding to what you expect in the air. Um, in fact, I wanna, I wanna try that real quick. I'll just show you how to do that real quick. Let's say, so there's aileron to rudder right there. Okay, so I'm gonna go rudder aileron elevator. So this is the other one we can do. And I'm just gonna mix that in with, um, on switch C, I'll set it to two, and then it'll be off on this one, okay? So with this spot, I want rudder to aileron to be like minus 10 and minus 10. So what's gonna happen is when I give rudder, it's gonna give contrary aileron, okay? So I'm gonna yacht to the left and it's gonna try to keep those wings level, but only in this setting, okay? okay. When I come out of that, then I'm gonna get a 20% aileron to rudder mix and then I'm gonna get nothing, okay? So I'm gonna start with that, throttle cuts off. I am gonna get clipped back in because uh, we were at low voltage alarm. So it's a perfect time to just go ahead and take back off, yeah, right? Yeah, try something okay, new so and go. unexpected. Get into the gas hard. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just 50% throttle, folks. Now what I'm looking at is I'm looking at, okay, so I'm in my mix. When I give rudder, oh man, look how much flatter it is, guys. Look at that. It kind of resists that weird wonk. And I gotta tell you, that wonk is what crashed me. Look at this. See that? Now watch this. With it off, look at what it does. It wonks out on you. So I would say that really did help. So between the 1300 milliamp and that little bit of a contrary aileron, look at this, even at an angle. You see that? See how much less wonk it is? Here we go. See that? That's without. See how mm -hmm. much it wonks? Mm -hmm. Now with that contrary, you could control it and it just does what you want and what you're expecting. So I would say that's definitely worth doing. Now guys, we'll show this video in chronological order. Sometimes we do that, we almost never do. It just kind of depends on where a better flight comes from. So I'm gonna bring this in for a landing here. And then I'm gonna probably turn that up from 10 to just a little bit higher, okay? We'll just do a little bit of slip. The slip might be a little bit strange now that we have those weird mixes in there. Okay, tricycle it in, boom. And then look, the ground handling is actually pretty good too. That's also weird, um, yeah. given it's got rock hard tires, but it's got a pretty hard suspension on it. So that's a good thing for that part. So I'm gonna go back into mixing. I'm just like amazed how much better that flew with the mix. So I'm gonna go up to 50. Okay, I'm gonna set this one to 25. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back out. I'm gonna go to this. And I'm gonna make two different mixes if it'll let me. Okay, so in this setting, I want it on too, yeah. And then I'm gonna go a little bit higher. I said 15 instead of 10. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna give us a little bit flatter yawing. And then when I wanna shut it all off, I just put the C-switch up. So it's really nice. If you guys aren't using the tools in your tools, then you're kind of crazy because these things are expensive. You might as well take advantage of these help aids. All right, so here we go. We're gonna go down to the full setting. So we have both mixes, 50% rudder from aileron input. And then we're gonna give minus 15% aileron from rudder. Oh man, that's so much less wonk on takeoff. Look how flat that was. You know what that means? When I'm giving rudder correction on ground handling, the thing just stays rock solid. Look at this, guys. Look at that. Staying totally flat when I give rudder. Oh, I'm <laughs> loving it. I could go up to 20 and it would probably sit still. May, 
may even roll. Look at this, guys. So good. Now I'm going to shut it off. Look at this. Look how wonk it is. You see that wonk behavior? Now I turn on my setting and look how flat it is. So much better. Okay, I'm going to go over the house, efficiency style. Get out of the throttle. Just relaxing. Oh, man, it's so much more flyable now, folks. A little bit of throttle. You hear a little bump of fart, fart of gas. Look at this. Oh, man. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. And look, it doesn't tip. It doesn't jump. It doesn't bounce. You know, so the way I see it is two big factors that we were able to correct to get this thing tamed down. You'll notice the wind is still moving. It's not dead mm -hmm. calm, folks. It's more calm than it was when we first started. That is a factor, but notwithstanding that one factor, I'm telling you that wonk behavior that you get from that dihedral with input from rudder, which could be from uh, not ASRX, but in this case, the reflex behavior, that could be causing this thing to act wonk. I like this mix so much. You know what I'm gonna do, guys? This is, so normally my C switch is up. So check this out. I'm going to mixing. I'm gonna do something crazy, guys. I like it so much. Guess what? I'm turning it on. Just leave it on. I'm turning it on because it actually really makes the thing fly dang good. I don't need to be able to turn it on and off. I don't have to prove a point, but I did prove the point to you guys, hopefully. And I'm gonna I'm gonna turn this to on as well. And I might actually kick that up just a hair. I'm gonna go like 18 and 18 and just see if we can get that thing just dead flat. Now, do you think I have enough power? Because I've already crashed it three times twice. Well, I know, but now you like it. So 50% throttle. Dang it. We we'll have to do a corn cornfield landing. Oh man. I am full throttle. Let's see if we get it. Oh, third crash for you guys. I knew you wanted it from Brian Phillips RC. I just am relentless, <laughs> obsessively, relentlessly at your service. Wait, I think that might be trademarked by somebody. Yeah. Yeah. That's all right. They owe us like 260 bucks. <laughs> they, they didn't already get 50,000 bucks from us to put up the power lines to take them down and put them underground. But that's okay. We'll check for damage. I'm going to get another battery. We'll be right back. Well, evidently I did kill it. Dang it. Well, I, maybe. Maybe not. Well, let's see. Oh. Let's see. Wheel. Where did the wheel go? How did I break the wheel? I don't know. Well, you well, know what I wonder? Before it gets dark. Yeah, I brought another battery all excitedly wanting to fly again, but I guess I did kind of use this one up today. As you can see, I've now broken it in multiple ways. But guys, let's just talk about this for a minute. If you're gonna, if you're gonna fly to low voltage warnings, don't be surprised if you, if you crash like Brian Phillips RC. Yep. Uh, but truth is we found the way to set this plane up to get good performance out of it. I think I'm gonna definitely be fixing the landing gear because I really enjoy this plane now, now that I've crashed it three times. And so we hope you guys will wanna get one now from the links in the video description below. All you have to do is look down below and you can see it right there. You can buy the plane, you can buy the battery, transmitter, and you'll be supporting Brian Phillips RC and all of our shenanigans of flying to low voltage warning so that we can impress all of you at home as I embarrassingly crash. So we hope you enjoyed it. Now you know how to fix stuff, maybe. Um, in a really haphazard way and then crash again. Mm -hmm. That's what we do in RC. All right, guys, stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. The camera crew found it. Yay, amazing. <laughs> I can't believe we broke that though. That's so bizarre because I didn't feel like we hit hard enough to break that thing, mm -hmm. but evidently we did. Maybe it was from the other two crashes. Maybe it was weakened already. It might've been weakened from my awesome piloting <laughs> skills. But either way, guys, I gotta say, really cool plane. It's probably gonna be more cool for you since you don't have to crash yours. You can just copy our setup and I'm just gonna refresh your memory. If you didn't already catch it, this is what you need to do, okay? So this is why you watch all of Brian Phillips RC's videos. You go down to mixing. What you're gonna do is you're gonna set a reverse mix. That was beautiful, okay? Rudder to aileron, put it to the switch on. Okay, it's hard to do with one hand. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to aileron to rudder and you're gonna set it to like 50%. And it just makes this thing fly like a flat wing beauty, okay? So it's gonna be an absolutely gorgeous experience for you. Now, the biggest thing you can do if you don't do either of those things is do a more proper size 1300 3S 
and you're going to have great experience. That was a pretty good flight time still. Yeah. I would recommend, uh, you know, like a Gen 1 so you can throw a voltage alarm in there. We didn't set up any pack telemetry or any of that good, good jazz on ours. And by the way, our wing that we glued back in, it's still glued in fine. Mm -hmm. Um, I think it must have just been that thing there, by the way, if you guys are thinking if I hit that, I'm pretty sure we didn't hit that. That's a water, uh, a water line marker mm -hmm. uh, for the neighbor. And our neighbor is super cool. He actually lets us fly here and he lets us fly full scale here too, which is pretty cool. So he says, take off land, whatever you need to do. It's cool. He's been a good neighbor, mm -hmm. um, mostly because we're awesome neighbors. But Cub, Cub, I don't know if they, if this is a licensed product, but Probably you know, not. I probably wanted to replace the landing gear more than anything on this, but then I was kind of happy with the way it was landing at the end there. Yeah, it was way better. So guys, if you want a really cool um, product, I would definitely check out the J3 Cub. Um, don't take marks off of it because of my crash, um, but I will say this. I don't like when you have to do mixes to make a plane fly clean, but I suppose it's better that I sacrificed it for you uh, so that you don't have to. And uh, to be honest with you, I think this will be a pretty easy fix. I'll just find landing gear from some other crash plane I've got that happen to fit into this hole, or I'll order new ones. I mean, every once in a blue moon, we do that, like once every 10 years or so, because we've so been doing this about 10 years. due to order something. We are due to order something. Hey, and you didn't mention, this does come with floats. Oh, it does come with floats. Um, and yeah, the floats would actually take care of the landing gear issue. I could just put the floats on. Just wait till we have a pond. Yeah, there's that or like detail. Water in the pond. That we yeah, have. we'll have an empty pond soon, hopefully, like in a couple weeks. But mm -hmm. if you guys are curious to see the progress of the pond, just stay tuned. And if you haven't already subscribed to Brian Phillips RC, please do so, and we'll be happy to drag you along, kicking and screaming <laughs> through all of our crazy RC adventures. Not the least of which is flying a J3 Cub and crashing it multiple times on Maiden. So if I unsubscribe, I don't have to. <sighs> Anymore? You are exempt. You are exempt from that offer, camera crew. Uh, but yeah, seriously though, guys, really cool plane, beautiful. Just look at it from my good side. <laughs> if you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Uh, actually, flies pretty good, but I, I'm seriously wonked out by the fact that we need those mixes. And if you guys have questions and comments about it, definitely leave it down below. This is a little bit of a weird one. And also just to keep in mind, this is a version four from FMS and yet we still can't quite open this without modifications or get the battery in. So of the planes, I gotta say PA-18, one of my favorites in the 1.7 meter class. This is a considerably smaller plane, probably fit into more cars a lot easier than that. But this reminds me of the way it flies and that it just does what you want once you do the things that I suggested. And you'll be surprised, you'll be saying, don't be blowing smoke. You're just trying to make excuses for your crashes. Guys, you should know me by now. I don't really make excuses for crashes. I just crash stuff and then I do it again. But the truth is on this one, I felt like that wonkadelic behavior that did contribute to the crash. It's not like it caused the crash. The pilot error caused the crash because I induced wonkadelic behaviors from a plane that could have been better controlled if I would have put those mixes in. And so that's what you should do. And you can save your J3 Cub. And I gotta say, the thing is still gorgeous even after the crashes. It really is. Amazing, amazing. We, we hit pretty hard on that first one when we hit the dirt. Both of them. Where we chipped the prop. Yeah. And then the second one where we like broke the motor mount. I can't believe And that then one ripped the wings out. I can't believe it's still flying. I wanna fly it right now on one wheel. But I know the camera crew is gonna get mad because it's getting dark. It is getting dark, yeah. But I was totally gonna do that. And then she talked me out of it through telepathy. It's it weird. Is, it is we've been dark. We've been married a long time. Yeah. We're old. All right, guys. Hopefully we answered all your questions and then led you to some other interest to have one of these for yourself. And if we did, definitely check the links. If you want to support us in other ways, we've got Patreon, PayPal, YouTube Super Thanks, and YouTube members. All appreciated, but we really think the best way to do it is by planes. When you like what you see. Now, if you don't like what you see here, I do want to make a little bit of an appeal to you. Like I said earlier, don't blame the plane for the piloting error but do blame the plane for having wonkandelic behaviors, okay? We're trying to strike the balance between, you know, giving you guys the full unadulterated truth and also balance it against the fact that, you know, I flew it into low voltage protection and crashed it, which was stupid. And I do that a lot for you guys. And then also I crashed on takeoff like an idiot. And then also the wonkadelic behavior I induced myself. 
So, I mean, you have to weigh those things into your decision-making when you see me do it. But at the, on the flip side, you've seen me fly thousands of sorties and not crash because of wonkadelic behaviors. I crash on those instead because of giant trees that jump out from nowhere right. 45 years ago when they started growing. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all you get. Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. Okay, YouTube. So off camera, I did some repairs. I just want to point out a couple of details. No mic. Sorry, I took off my beautiful blue shirt. I'm just going to disappoint a lot of you. But you can see the landing gear pulled out. We forced some glue in here, some China glue. China special China glue. We did a big, thick piece of tape. I had the camera crew squish this in and just... Pressed, I pressed the tape in. I did that on both sides. You can see it's kind of relieving a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? So now also I pulled the cowl off. You guys may have noticed I was trying to straighten the prop shaft here. I'm gonna give you a quick, I did have to glue the motor mount back a little bit, but watch this guys. Okay, so throttle holds off. Okay, so a little bit of wobble, but you'll notice it's quiet. Doesn't sound like a gas anymore, which is kind of a bummer. So throttle cuts on. So as you can see, we got that resolved. That was done with two crescent wrenches. And I also had a screwdriver that I used in here to lever. And I can hold the shaft with that. And I actually held the screwdriver. And then I was able to bend with this. Okay. So we got the landing gear. And I have to show you my stupidest idea yet for repairing Chinese foam planes. Stay tuned. So feast your eyes on this wonderful apparatus of <laughs> exceptionalism. Oh, what you can see here is I have a ground uh, attached to two clamps so that I can hold this thing and then I can weld my actual landing gear back together. That's because I'm like, why can I not just weld this freaking thing together? And so as you can see, perfect penetration, beautiful weld. That's beautiful. The colors are, are near perfection. So I'm just gonna clean this up and I'm gonna show you one little bit of, are you gonna be able to, you won't be able to look, but the camera can look. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys proper safety gear. I've got some gloves. The These shorts. are welding gloves. The, I've got shorts. Okay. And then I've got slip on nice. things. Lovely. Okay, so this is, this is the way you do it on YouTube. So if I get burned, extra points. Did you watch the solar eclipse with so those on? That's, oh yeah, of course. Of course I did. So what I'm gonna do is I'll release my, uh, my professional clamp mechanism. Drop this out, okay? So that just releases that. And see, I've got my ground actually attached to that. And then my heat settings, they're hyper specific. I turn the knob to two instead of one. And then I turn the wire speed all the way down. This is just a 110. I, I even forgot to turn the gas on. Oops, <laughs> that probably would have helped a little bit to keep this cleaner. But seriously, look how nice that looks. Now I'm gonna weld this side and I'll show you what it looks like. Now camera crew's just gonna close their eyes when I weld. But as you can see, even with a little bit of scrapage, it's not too bad. It's getting reasonably good penetration for being what appears to be some sort of like a deadly coated steel. It's probably like chromium. <laughs> so, I mean, if I'm weirder than usual on the next video, you'll understand. Use it as a toothbrush. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this back in and see all I did was I just put a clamp on here to where I got it to hold kind of the direction I wanted. And it worked really nice. Some of you guys might have better, better apparatus than this, but it actually worked phenomenally because I could just adjust this until everything held up. And you're like, you didn't even go through the trouble of taking the ultra hard, super high quality foam tires off. The answer to that question is a resounding no. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna turn this like that, okay? When you guys want long format, this is what you get. See, I've got that. See, I can just adjust this until I got a good, a good point. Now I might just make sure I got my ground as close as possible and I actually have a good ground. And then this super long, like really high quality welder, um, you know, I, I can't quite make the angle, so I have to pull this a little bit closer. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weld this. Cam crew is gonna close her eyes okay. and I'm gonna hope that I don't get any uh, splashes of uh, molten steel uh, on, on my human flesh. Feet. Okay, so this is gonna work now. I, I do know how to weld, believe it or not. Okay, here we go. All right, kids, don't try this at home. All right, here goes nothing. You ready, camera crew? Yep. What you wanna do is listen for the perfect noise. 
Like, you know that pop, 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 pop. If you hear like a couple of pops, you're good. That the... it's Chinese steel. It's okay. Different. It's, it it's different. It's, it's different. Okay. <laughs> then put your knee down and make sure you catch like a ball of molten steel when you're doing it. And go in there and grab it right away. Okay, look at that, guys. Look at that. That's probably 10 times as strong as the Chinese engineering, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna give you another shot of that, wow. Holy cow, that guy, whoa. There's even a teat on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so we'll pull this out. <gasps> it's not that bad, just kidding. But seriously, that is not bad penetration for a crappy welder. And look at that. And we have, we have good alignment. We have a little bit of squareness issue here. I was gonna laugh if it. Broke. I know, me too. But I mean, seriously, what are you, what are you cringing for? <laughs> Wait for it to snap. Oh, that's a little toasty. Do you want to touch and show? No. People? Okay. All right. You'll take my word for it, guys. I will. But seriously, though, um, when we when we do this stuff on Brinefolds RC, like you usually don't see all the repairs. You just see some of them because sometimes I crash on my own when we're not filming. It doesn't happen that often, truthfully. No. But yeah, look at that. That's not bad at all. I could take a grinder to that and make it look pretty, but I'm probably just going to make it look ugly. And I'm just going to like put that on a plane and I'm just going to fly it like that. And all I really need to do is let this cool down just a hair. In fact, let's go do it. We'll just leave this apparatus to cool because it is a welder after all. And we'll pause and meet you back inside. So remember, from now on, only welding helmets while working on foam. Safety first. Okay, remember? Okay, so you see this? This side needs to come in just a hair. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this spot to bend because that looks like that would do it. So I'm gonna hang on to this, okay? I'm gonna show you that trick I had with the screwdriver, okay? So the screwdriver meaning I'm gonna use a number two. This just happens to be a long, yes, I have all the scrap in my kitchen and my basement and in the truck. And if we have another building, I'll do it there too. You see what I'm talking about? That becomes my lever, okay? So you can hold this wherever you can hold it. And then the other thing you use is obviously another, you know, sizable wrench, not a crescent. This one's master force, guaranteed for life to fail. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab uh, two points of contact here, and I don't even know if I'm gonna need. So all I wanna do is get a 90 degree lateral bend. So I need to, which way do I need to do this? I need to do it like that, and then I'm gonna go up with my chest. Okay, so I went up with my chest. Oh, body, look at that, I overbent it just a hair. You guys see, just as easy as that, okay? And then this, this might need to be splayed out just a hair more. I might even be able to get that last little bit with my hands. Okay, there it is. Touching the weld. Oh yeah, she's already cool. Cool to, to the touch. Safety first, guys. Keep it safe out there. Now, let's just stick. I mean, we just welded this like 30 seconds ago, so let's go ahead and put it in the foam plane right now. Um, I'm going to take off my safety gear because it's dangerous gear now. She's just counting down. So basically what we need to do is we need to put this back in. Okay. And so that's going to drop back in. And then our springs will get loaded here in a second. After we're done putting this back in, you know. And the funny thing is, I think this might actually fit better now that I did that. Because you remember when we first installed it, we had all sorts of heck trying to put that in. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm just gonna show you guys. Because here at, on Brian Phillips RC, we always finish our videos and then have the camera crew uploading them. And then I come in and ask her to add a clip. Yes. We don't always. So you better all watch this eight minutes and 42 seconds. This is an important eight minutes and 42 seconds, okay? So this is truth in RC, guys. If you don't have a welder, you know, I don't know what to tell you. You're just gonna have to go to your neighbor and use his welder or hers. But seriously though, I've never used the welder to fix landing gear before, but I'm gonna do it all the time now. Cause like, honestly, that was still hot. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's not that hot. But there is, there, this this worked really good. I'm surprised, you touch it, touch it. Oh, it's, yeah. It's warm. It's warm. But when your body is expecting it to be like 400 degrees, you're usually a little bit extra protective. Unless you're really smart and wear a welding helmet to fix foam airplanes. Right. Okay, all right, so that's that's done. 
Now all I gotta do is just put these little spring doohickeys on here. They obviously serve their purpose. They, they protected the plane from damage. I'm still, of all the stuff that broke, this is the only thing I don't understand breaking was the landing gear. Which by the way, you can buy landing gear. It's not like they're not for sale, I'm just a cheapskate. Ooh, that's beautiful. And I watched when I was uploading the video that's already uploading. Yeah, you're welcome. It was, it did not look like that hard of a landing. So I still am I don't surprised. Understand. Maybe it was broke before me just like finished a week or something. or something. I don't know. Okay, so look, now I'll just snap the, the fairings back on. Snap, snap. Okay, and I was correct. I think I might've said in the Unbox Build Radio setup, these are gonna be the first things to break, so boom. Now these tabs are broke off somewhat, but I'll be able to still get them on. And that's gonna hide my beautiful welding job. I'm actually kind of just- True, now your little nipple is in the way. Oh, well, the nipple's never really that problem. That's, that's we're gonna to tolerate that. Okay. I can definitely put up with that. It's a trade off, you know? <laughs> All right, so guys, there you have it. 1300 3S. Stuffed in the hole, ready to rock and roll. We got nipped now. And the landing gear are in one piece, ready to fly again. The skies over Brian Phillips RC. It's gonna be amazing. We hope you guys enjoyed the additional content because obviously if I wore this all the time, I would be even better at this job. So I'm gonna start doing it all the time. But seriously though, that, that surprisingly worked well. And I think we're gonna keep some of the resiliency. I should probably take that off before I damage something else. Um, the resiliency of the landing gear should be back to par. I think that weld got good, good enough penetration. It should hold up. So really like the way it flies. I'm kind of dying to fly it some more. So if you guys see a flight and everything looks smooth and perfect, we will make sure to mention the fact that we did all these weird mixes to make it fly that way. Because at the end of the day, we want you guys to have a good experience. We wanna crash them so you don't have to. Uh, occasionally that does happen, but truthfully, this is a beautiful plane. It's gonna irritate the heck out of you if you crash, but I gotta say, the thing took it like a man. I mean, it really did. I'm super surprised, Megan's really surprised, the mm -hmm. camera crew, and uh, I mean, even this direct hit on the wing just like barely crushed the tip. I mean, it's almost unbelievable. Yeah, it really and is. And motor mounts, uh, prop that damaged. Motor mount was dismounted. The wings broke free from the plastic, but I took it out and flew it. Even with this wing mm -hmm. strut, which is sort of pseudo structural, came out. No damage to the tail, no damage to the servos. All we had to do was just some minor welding and gluing. <laughs> all right, that's all you get. Stay tuned. So much more from Brian Phillips RC. Thanks for watching.